Hello, and welcome to what just might be the very first video entry in the history of Alt Dev Blog a Day. Now, mind you, Alt Dev Blog a Day's history is roughly a month and a half, so it's actually not that impressive. But still, uh, this is the first in a series of three videos about software pipelining, uh, starting with episode four, because much like Star Wars, episodes one, two, and three do not exist. Okay, so here on the left we have some fairly typical code. We're loading in two vectors, uh, we're taking those vectors, we're multiplying them, we're storing out the result, and then we're updating some pointers and looping back around. So let's take a look at the SPU assembly for this. Okay, for those of you who are uncomfortable with SPU assembly or who may not know the opcodes, here's how it breaks down. The two loads that we're doing become LQD, which is load quad word deform. The multiply becomes FM, which is for our floating point multiply. And STQD, store quad word deform, is how we write back out to memory. Now looking at the pointer updates, those become AI, which is add immediate. Uh, the reason that they're scheduled in like that is because after we use the pointers once, they're not used again throughout the rest of the loop. So the compiler is free to schedule it as early as possible, and rightfully so, it does. So now let's take a look at this in a pipeline view. So keep your eyes on that thing in the upper right corner. That's where the important information is going to be. So SPU instructions are broken down into even instructions and odd instructions. If it's on the proper memory boundary or memory alignment, you can issue an even and an odd instruction in the same cycle or co-issue them if there are no dependencies. So the lines where you see a red, which is the even, and a blue, which is the odd, on the same lines, we're dual issuing. So we start off with the dual issue. We can do that load, and we can do that add immediate pointer update in the same cycle. Same thing here. We can do another pointer update and another load. Moving down here, uh, compare equal is how we're doing our loop condition. Uh, I guess there's no odd instruction that we can schedule in there, so it's just even this cycle and AI add immediate is another pointer update. Now look what happens here. That huge jump with all that space in between where nothing was getting done, what's up with that? So it turns out that the result of the load quad word takes six cycles to actually get written out to register, which means that from the time that it's issued, we can't use it until six cycles later. Moving along, another bigger jump. Well, what's up here? It's the exact same thing. The floating point multiply also takes six cycles to write its result out to register, so we cannot issue that store, which obviously wants to store the result of the multiply, until cycle 14. Okay, so what problems do we want to solve here? Uh, number one, better dual issue. Those red oval looking things are spots where we're either issuing an even instruction but no odd, or in the case at the very bottom of the screen, we're issuing an odd but no even. So we'd really like to fix that up a little bit. Uh, we'd like to not have to wait the full latency of instructions to do stuff. Now, this is me messing with words a little bit. Obviously, if something takes six cycles, it's going to take six cycles. But there is a way to arrange it, which we will see in the next couple slides, so that you can actually issue the load and possibly issue the multiply at the exact same time through magic. Uh, it would be nice if we could find some other stuff to do in some of these remaining latency gaps. I mean, that's just total and complete wasted time. And it'd be cool if we can ins increase instruction level parallelism across loop iterations and across loop boundaries, which applies to our whole loop, as you can see in purple. Okay, let's go back to our original code. The problem with this really lies in the fact that the thing that we're loading in one and in two is the thing that we're using in the loop. So we're basically loading it, and then we have to block, stall, wait for everything to get loaded, then we can do the multiply. That's really the problem. So now let's look at a slightly modified version. Okay, a couple things I want to point out here. Number one, check out those underlined red things. So instead of just having something you load and then use, I've broken it into two different sets of variables. There's one called next and there's one called current. So what we're doing in here is as soon as you get into the loop, we're loading something, but this thing that we're loading will not get used until the next iteration of the loop. When we actually do the multiply, 
we're doing the multiply with the values we loaded the previous iteration of the loop. And uh, a couple other things to point out. Look at the very, very top. Uh, that's called a prologue outside the loop. And that's needed because the first time we drop into this loop, um, we're doing current iter1 times current iter2, but those haven't been loaded yet. So outside our actual loop, we have to set everything up so that we can do this pipelining type thing. Uh, also, I want to mention that this is not the way you would normally do it. I'm just doing this to be lazy because uh, the loads on the SPU are speculatively executable. So it's not going to hurt us to load one extra iteration than our algorithm calls for. Normally, you would break stuff like this out into an epilogue that you would run at the end of the loop to clean up. So let's look at what it looks like now. Okay, here's our original code. If you remember, this was the problem area. The loads would block for six seconds, so we can't issue the multiply until they're ready. Now, what does it look like in our new version? Boom shakalaka, check it out. The floating point multiply and the loads issue in the same cycle. And then the very, very next cycle, we're issuing the other load. So we have completely solved that problem. However, that's still an issue. The, um, we didn't bother to fix the stores. So the floating point multiply, we still have to wait six seconds for the result for that thing so we can write it out. So uh, here's another way of looking at it. And now these diagrams aren't real or official or anything like that, so don't go using them on your computer science exam. I might have just made this up. Uh, things that are the same color get processed or done in the same iteration. If you have things of multiple color on multiple lines, that means there's a dependency between them. And everything inside that little white box thing is one loop iteration. So this represents our original code. The mull and the read are both red, so mull blocks waiting for read. And the write and the mull are both red, so the write has to block waiting for the result of that mull. So here's our first loop iteration, our second loop iteration, and our third loop iteration. Okay, now here is our slightly improved code that we saw before. This is our prologue, not part of the actual loop, it's that one read that we do before the others. And then we drop into the loop. Now, just like we saw in the pipeline view, the mull and the read are from two different iterations because they're two different colors, so they can co-issue, they don't block. However, the mull and the write are both red, so the write blocks waiting for the mull. Now, why are we able to do a red mull out of nowhere? It's because in the prologue, we did that red read. Same thing down here. So, we're doing a green mull. Why can we immediately do a green mull? Because in the previous iteration, we did a green read. And then the same thing down here. Now, optimally, if we were to fix the right also, it would look something like this. Our prologue would become two reads from different generations and one mull. That sets us up so that we could basically, and mind you, you can't actually issue three instructions in one cycle. I'm just saying that there are no dependencies. We have completely and totally obliterated, removed, gotten rid of, exterminated all dependencies and everything is wonderful so we can just continue with our loop and that's what it looks like